Hi everyone, I'm Jasmina with P11 Creative. Welcome to the Sales and Marketing Council's Frontline Sales Hero webinar sponsored by Loan Depot. We love Loan Depot. GSMC would like to thank the service of our outstanding board of directors and acknowledge the support of BIASC. I'd also like to thank my fellow committee members for continuing to work hard to bring you great content. Kaylee with Lancy Homes, Rachel with Fusion Sign and Design, Megan with Trumark Homes, and Tracy, an outstanding marketing professional. I'd also like to remind you to support our industry through advocacy. Keep an eye out for emails from BIA requesting your involvement. We are all encouraged to do our part. <clears throat> and once again, thank you Loan Depot for your ongoing support of not only GSMC, but the industry overall as well. Now, I have the pleasure of introducing you to our moderator, Maddie Kowalik. Maddie is a two-time NHB 2017 and 2020 National Sales Professional of the Year, two-time BIA GSMC SoCal Sales Professional of the Year. Now, I usually don't script things, but I had to get all that written down because I could not remember that. So, <laughs> way to go, Maddie. With over $2 billion in sales since 1989, Maddie was recognized as Toll Brothers' number one sales manager nationwide in 2017 and 2018, and top three in 2019. So <clears throat> Maddie, I'd like, to, I'd like to have you introduce your rock star panel, who hopefully are gonna be following in your amazing footsteps soon. Thank you, Maddie. Um, thank you so much, Jasmine. I'm super excited to be here with this wonderful group. Um, I do want to just quickly say, my goodness, Jasmina uh, was one of the first people I met when I got into the industry. The first thing I was, uh, I was directed to do by my sales manager was to join the Sales and Marketing Council. And I did that right away. And it was the best thing I could have done because then I surrounded myself with the best people in the industry with very, very, very supported, a very supportive family. Uh, the new home industry is, is a family. And, uh, and Jasmina, this just warms my heart seeing you and having you introduce me. So thank you so much for that. So, gosh, everyone, welcome. And uh, we're here to introduce you to three phenomenal uh, gentlemen here. We've got Paul Owens here from Lansky, Don Gilbert from Brandy Wine, and Parker Duarte here from Hardy Homes. So, yeah, hi, guys. Um, but I'd like to take a minute and have you guys just introduce yourselves. Uh, Paul, can you tell us a little bit about you and your community? Yes, I'm with Lansky Homes, so thanks, Maddie. Uh, we are up here at Iron Ridge in Lake Forest. Uh, selling Brookhaven and Winstone community. Our price points right around the high 900s to 1.4 million. Uh, we were Orange County Register's Community of the Year voted um, for 2019. So we're on build out on some communities coming up here, uh, but it's been a great community when I started here with Lansky Lake Forest, kind of still up and coming, but it's been a fantastic community, great amenities and just love it up here. Thanks. Oh. Fantastic. Thank you for that. John, tell us about you. Hi, everyone. I'm John Gilbert. I'm with Brandywine Homes. Uh, we're a local kind of family builder here based out of Irvine. Um, we do primarily infill communities within OC and LA County. Um, and currently, I'm closing out a neighborhood in Whittier uh, in the mid fives to mid sevens. And then I'm also opening up a new community, another community uh, over in San Dimas in the $1.1 to $1.3 million range. Oh, fantastic. And we've got Parker, who's actually our Rookie of the Year for 2018. Uh, of course, uh, Paul and John are also award winners as well. So we've got an amazing panel here. Uh, Parker, go ahead and tell us a little bit about you. Yes, thanks, Maddie. Um, I'm Parker Duarte. Uh, I'm at Party Homes Inland Empire Division. And I'm currently working at Altus, which is our award-winning active adult community in Beaumont, California. And um, it's a beautiful community with really contemporary designs, but we start in the low 300,000s and to the 400,000s. And um, yeah, it's just a really kind of neat community. And it's the first time um, that Party Homes Inland Empire has started um, in the active adult market, so. Fantastic, thanks for sharing that. Okay, so you guys all learned a little bit about our panelists. What I'm really curious to find out is this has been a very interesting time for us in the last 90 days. Paul, share with me the first couple of weeks. Uh, how did you feel? I mean, we're, we're as salespeople 
And as representatives, we always want to be very, um, you know, bright and cheery. And this, this was an interesting time. So I'm really curious, how did you feel the first couple of weeks? Uh, we actually kind of, we wore our hard hats the first couple of weeks, I think. Um, it, it was a little scary. I think everybody can acknowledge um, the unknown, the fear involved with it. Uh, Kaylee, Tom, John Ho, all the management here was in the war room like the next day. And it really helped out spearhead some new ideas and new ways how to get moving forward. Um, my partner and I had a unique situation. She kind of ran the social media. I was in the office. We were able to schedule appointments. We still had locked office social distancing, but people always have to buy and sell a home. And that's what we found out. If we were still visible, we were going to be successful. So I think that was key. And then really ramping up social media uh, to get that going. Yep. Yep. Social media is really important. That's for sure. Um, Tell me a little bit, Parker, about what, you know, how did you feel? Yeah, I think, you know, in the very beginning of this, I think, at least for me and my team, we felt this overwhelming feeling of change that was about to occur. Um, and we really didn't know which way it would go. Um, but I wouldn't classify, you know, my feelings as fear. Um, but really, I think it was a time for action and a, a time to really, uh, for us to, to take a step back look at our old habits and, and see which new habits that we can form during this time, because um, it was really gonna go you know, one of two ways and um, really having our team come together and, and get through kind of that initial shock of everything um, you know, was really important. But um, you know, I think our typical selling techniques, um, we really had to throw out and reinvent ourselves. Um, you know, initially in that, that beginning period, but. Yeah, yeah. How about you, John? Kind of a blend of the two. Um, for us, I think in the beginning, we were trying to be respectful of everyone's feelings. It was, you know, uncertain for all of us, but, um, you know, I'm big into continuing education. So um, I read some articles and, you know, bottom line is there's people in like the 08 crisis, for example, who, who sank and there's people who swam, you know, who, who soared and stuff. So I really wanted to do everything possible to try and make sure we continued our sales and stuff. And so um, kind of like what Paul touched on too, we really, really uh, focused on social media. That's kind of something new that we brought in and, and it's, it's worked out pretty well for us. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, for me, I, it, it, I kind of um, had a little bit of a head start. I have some family uh, overseas you know, in Iran, and they had kind of experienced all of this about a week or so before us. So I already went into a little bit of um, trying to figure out, uh oh, what's, what's coming our way? And and I actually went dark a little bit. For, for a few weeks, I wasn't on social media, and I had to just kind of stand back and observe and, and just regroup and, and try and figure out kind of what, what's going on. And I wanted to make sure that our current buyers and S knew we were there for them and that uh, no matter what's going on, they can reach us at any time time they had our cell numbers home numbers whatever they needed so it was more of just uh for us just making sure that our current buyers knew we were we were there for them and that we were going to make it through this together um and then you know within a couple of weeks it was like i'm gonna i'm gonna go back in the office and, and see what's going on because every somebody was in our office one day you know every day it wasn't all of us um however then i thought i want to be there every day i want to kind of see what's going on um and we had people driving up we had people coming in and I thought, oh, this is, this is good news. You know, so um, it just helped, it helped me realize there's still buyers that, that want to find a home you know, out there. So anywho, thanks for sharing you guys. Um, question for you. Did, did you guys experience any cancellations during this time? Parker? Yes, the, the infamous question. Uh, yeah, you know, we did experience um, some cancellations, but it felt it felt different than our typical cancellations. You could tell that there was fear, um, you know, in some of our customers. In the active adult market, um, you know, you have a buyer that went through 2008, and, you know, sometimes this purchase is their last home, and, and making a financial mistake um, could be very costly at this time in their life. Um, so I think that um, 
you know, we, we did have those, those worried buyers and we just really held on to them tight. We kind of had some fun in our office and we had a um, no cancellation policy uh, for 30 days. And it was a kind of fun way for us to connect with our buyers, have them take a deep breath, not make long-term decisions, uh, you, know, um, you know, short-term decisions for, for you know, long-term goal. And um, really just take that step back, regroup, and, um, you know, so we were able to save some. Some fell through the cracks, but ultimately it was about just keeping them close, um, not worrying about their contingencies and, and really giving them, you know, the step back that they needed. A little extra space for them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Paul, how about you? Yeah, I, Lancy as a whole, we had, you know, some um, cancellations and I think we were geared up for that. But like Parker said, it, it did feel different. It wasn't a buyer's remorse thing. Um, personally here at Brookhaven, we had one where we had a contingent sell literally two days before escrow, the contingent buyer's home to close lost their job. So we were scrambling, put it back. We even extended escrow. They tried to resell and it just it just didn't work out. So we had a couple there, but yeah, it, it was uh, just a different, I think I found that people, word gets around, people got nervous and it was finding those positive articles, those positive reinforcements. They looked to us as the leaders, like seeing how nervous we were, the fear, if we had fear, you'd see it relate right back to the buyers. But if you could be confident and put back, you know, the market's still stable, Pricing still there, inventory super low. And, it, and that's at Lancy, we did a big social media campaign trying to find articles. And my partner does uh, Tuesday tips and Friday facts. And, and we got a big vi uh, video social campaign out. And it's just expressing it that way. And it seemed to calm the fear a little bit and really help sales generate during a time when we thought it would be really slow. Well, I think it's important for um, everyone on this webinar to know that you sold six homes during this time, is that right? It was, a little help I'll, I'll say from uh, my little hound dog, Woody the Wiener, because he was a home hounder in some social media videos. So he, uh, he, he ended up finding a great quick move in home and uh, that helped. But it was like going outside your comfort zone in your box and it really helped. All our teams up here participated. Um, we did a Sherlock Holmes and Watson video, my partner and Lisa King and I, and it's, it's a little, you're afraid to go down those avenues. And if you can't laugh at yourself, who can you laugh at? But it, it really shocked us how it kind of took off and did that. So moving forward, Lancy, we're all trying to do that better as thing we didn't do before. And it's really helped generate more sales for us as a company. Dinner's on Paul tonight then. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> John, any cancellations? Not so much, actually. We were super, super lucky. We only had two um, out of 30 foreign backlogs. So really, really great. Um, proud of that and stuff. I think for us, just like everybody else has talked about too, we really, really focus just on the customer service. Um, and so kind of one, one thing that we did for our buyers is we sent each of our buyers in escrow an individual personalized video um, showing them like a walkthrough of the update on their house and stuff. So just those personal touches really went a long way. That's what we found out. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, we, we did um, FaceTime up for our weekly meetings. So our construction manager and uh, either with me or, or one of my colleagues, we would go and, and scan in front of the home and do FaceTime and, and show them, you know, how the home is progressing. And they loved being able to, to see that. So it's interesting how, you know, well, it's not interesting. It's really great how innovative we can all be, you know, during a situation like this and, and figure out how to do things better and, um, and, and be more empathetic and be more more caring. And maybe that's just the silver lining of all this. I mean, I know it's been, we're talking about the, the first couple of weeks, the cancellations. However, you know, it's, there's been a lot of good that's come of it too. I know, I know I feel a lot, you know, a lot closer to, to our buyers that are in escrow right now. And definitely mm -hmm. I have a, a, a different um, appreciation of the number of people walking in the door you know, right now, the, the banks are really tough, wouldn't you guys say? Mm -hmm. The banks are really tough right now. Mm -hmm. And we have to really uh, sift through who's coming through our door. So as opposed, for me at least, as opposed to having the thought of we have a lot of looky-loos, now it's like, I want to talk to 
everybody because I'm going to have to work with each one to figure out who's the who's going to be the buyer that the bank is going to say is the right buyer. No longer that we can just try and get creative, uh, show bank statements or what have you. So um, how, how are you guys handling the, I, I'm assuming your, your traffic's picked up. Did you say, Paul, your traffic's picked up? Yes, it, it's been, um, it's picked up a little bit. Um, we've had, uh, through COVID, it was less, but the quality was there. I mean, people that were out, they were looking for a home. Mm -hmm. How come I have no voice? So it's, uh, oh, computer, you had that it's getting through that and moving through that, putting, in, yeah. putting them in touch nope. with the right yeah. lender and getting through those programs and kind of helping them and lead a way to, to make them find a home and make them feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. John, traffic for you guys? Picked up a little bit. Um, you know, yeah, we, we, we really use the appointment only thing to, as a sales tool to really gauge, kind of like you talked about, try and pre-qualify people a little bit before they come in, especially with all the health concerns in the initial kind of first two weeks of it. Um, but you know, I just try to use it to our advantage. So traffic's definitely been picking up and stuff recently, but, um, yeah, I, I personally love the appointment only when we started off. <laughs> hmm, yeah. Parker, are you, you guys, yeah. is your traffic, yes. because I know you've got the senior citizen. That's weird. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So an active adult, it was, you know, kind of interesting because I, I feel like our, um, you know, everybody's over 55 and it, it's a, a group that could be highly impacted by COVID. Um, you know, it was, I think it brought comfort to them. It, it brought probably more comfort to them um, having that appointment basis. But I'd say over the entire time, we were busy. I mean, our presentations got longer and we were able to spend more time with people. But we were, we were constantly, you know, from one appointment to the next. We have a really great um, online team that, that is able to schedule, you know, all those different appointments coming in. And um, it was really fascinating to kind of see just the consistency and the quality that was coming through the door. And, um, you know, actually this weekend will be our first weekend where we officially open up to the public and, and have all of our 12 models opened again. But um, there's going to be, you know, just the quality that was coming in and, and how they were using our website um, was just super important to keeping us busy and keeping us um, you know, consistently with a new appointment. And um, I know our team has, you know, here has really benefited from that. Yeah, huge shout out to our online sales consultants. Um, two of our sales yeah. right away was, you know, through them. They had uh, qualified them and talked to them and found out who was really eager to get out and um, set an appointment with us and, and handed the baton and we took it from there. So super, super thankful for our online sales consultants for sure especially during this time I'm, I'm curious you guys so now that we've had a chance to kind of experience um, by appointment rather than just walk in I'd love to hear which one you guys prefer oh which one would you prefer um you know both a little bit I think the challenge with by appointment is sometimes that appointment gets delayed a little bit in traffic you try to schedule your day with it and just kind of have to be flexible and go with that. Um, mm -hmm. I like when I was here uh, with COVID, it was people were walking up and they were, they were like, do I have to have an appointment? I'm like, come on, you're here now. We'll go ahead and log it in and schedule it for what we need. But let's help you find a home now. So I think it was a little bit of both. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. John, how about you? Totally agree with him. I think he, he said it perfectly. <laughs> Um, I think it was it was fun to to have an appointment only setting. It was a new challenge as a salesperson too. So I, I liked it and stuff, but I like it both ways. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Parker, yeah, I think we really we really excelled in the appointment environment. I think um, um, just getting that control back. Um, you know, as a salesperson, sometimes it's very easy to allow people to. So just walk through the models and, um, you know, a lot of times they just leave with a lot of questions and, and sometimes they don't get everything that they need when they're walking through, our, you know, our homes. 
um, you know, to really make them make that purchase decision. So I think we found a lot of success with um, that appointment, you know, only basis. I really, really do like it. And I think that um, I'm able to get more accomplished with that person when I'm giving my undivided attention. I think there's a time and place for, for walk through traffic. Um, and a lot of people like to do that on their own. I think it's something that, um, you know, just privately, you know, to go through a home and ask questions later. But there is some sort of control that as a salesperson, I, I really liked, um, you know, and, and I feel like we got more information, more done in a, in a shorter period of time. I absolutely agree with you. And I felt that the, um, the ele that the service was elevated. There was more of a white glove, you know, concierge kind of service for them. And it was like they had the VIP appointment with us and they just felt really, you know, honored and taken care of is uh, the way that I saw it. So I, I really, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy, you know, by, by appointments um, for sure. So who knows, who knows where, which way our industry will end up going. But I think this was a, this was a good um, time for us to see what it takes to give that superb service, you know, to our guests that take the time not to come see us. So, okay. So I got another question for you guys. Um, marketing has done an amazing job during this time. I mean, I, I know all three of your company's marketing departments headed out of the park and did it very quickly to, to continue getting clients coming in to see us. Paul, if there was something that you would want to see marketing uh, collaborate with you on, what, what would that be? I mean, the number one here, I, I think a lot of feedback we got that it helped increase appointment, uh, increase sales, was the next day they were out here doing the Matterport videos and the links. Um, collectively as a team, we had a uh, shout out to Joe and Jane up at Presley. Um, one of their friends helped do individual um, tour, uh, little 30 second video clips we could email out to those prospects. We, did, we started video chat. Everybody came together as a team to help and use those tools and it, Shame on us for not maybe doing it sooner, but it all taught us something I think will forever stay with that, so. Me, me, Parker? Yeah, and just to piggyback off that, I, I found it super fascinating that, um, you know, as salespeople, we did, you know, we, we didn't really have access to these tools before, and, um, and just the ability for a marketing team and sales team to really partner together. I mean, there was tools opened up to me um, overnight that whether it was zoom um, you know being able to send videos through email or or text you know through a link all these different tools that we were able to have access to um, you know really allowed for us to give in just a complete transformation overnight this really cool experience for for each and every one of our buyers so um, you know it was really nice to see marketing and salespeople really need to come together and um, you know provide that that service to to our buyers. Thus, it's called sales and marketing, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's important. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's it's uh, again, I feel that you know, a silver lining or the positive that's coming out of all this is I've noticed that the collaboration is tightened, and uh, and we're leading we're leading on marketing and marketing is leaning on us as the front line you know we're, we're hearing what's happening straight from the clients the, the potential buyers that are walking in our door and for us as professionals it's important that we log information any ideas comments we hear and we give it right back to marketing and um you know team, teamwork makes the dream work and so as long as we can all keep that line of communication open and keep sharing ideas there's there's no way anyone can lose. It's all it's all a win-win. Yeah, and sh shameless plug for Maddie, but she wrote a really nice article. I'm sorry. Um, uh, an, an octopus, really, <laughs> but really showing how teamwork, you know, works as one unit. And it's a it's a really great article. She she has it on, I think, LinkedIn, right, Maddie? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really just a good thing when all departments are working together. And I think I think we all saw that during during this time of of having to work together. Um, 
and and you know providing just this really unique experience for everyone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, question: How with with some cities still wanting us to wear masks? Some cities are saying we don't need to wear masks. Um, I'd like to find out from you guys how are you handling that in each of your communities? Um, because it, it, it's it's an interesting divide. Some people feel like I am not wearing a mask and don't make me wear one, and etc. And then the other ones are like, "Wow, you don't have a mask on." So, uh, John, how, how are you handling that? Um, both my neighborhoods are in LA County, so we don't really have a choice. <laughs> um, you got to wear a face mask is is how it works for us, and we're trying to you know safety first. And I think people are actually we just started reopening last weekend, and um, we have a big. A frame outside that has all our safety protocols. And I think people are appreciating that too, that we're taking the extra step on our end too, to make sure, ensure their safety when they're visiting our homes. Um, so for us, yeah, face masks are required and we got, we got to follow the rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah, being in LA is a little bit, little, little more strict for you, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Parker in the Inland Empire, what's happening yeah. there? Yeah, Inland Empire, they were pretty quick to um, pull back a lot of the restrictions that um, had come our way. Um, people have been very, you know, over, you know, I think very just respectful of, of each other and wearing a mask hasn't even really come up. I think people just are, have really expected it. And, um, we all wear our masks here in the office and, um, you know, it's just kind of what life is right now. But I think, uh, we haven't had anybody that's really had a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Oh, Orange County. Yeah, Orange County, we've just relaxed a little bit this week. Um, I, I think it's gauging knowing the customer. Um, we've worn them in the office. We've had customers come in without it recommended. We'll still do the social distancing. But I think it's seeing, you, you can gauge by that customer if they come in and we're in the office by yourself, we'll put a mask on. And it, it's just kind of blend to where they're at to get them in that comfort zone. Yeah, we, we have, um, I told brothers, we have a wonderful um, training through our VPs of sales, and they put out a great video for all of us. And really, it's, it's pretty simple. Keep that, you know, social distancing, um, keep your face six feet apart. You don't have to wear the mask. They can see your smiling face. However, what we did is we actually would ask. If someone came in with a mask, um, I, I said, no. I'm going to, I'm going to stay six feet away for social distancing and they would giggle and I'd say, would you like me to put my mask on? And they'd say, no, but can I take mine off? <laughs> say, sure. You know, so, or else they would say, no, we'd like to keep our mask on. I said, would you like me to put mine on? And they said, actually we would. And so then I would put mine on and, and still I would do this, you know, the, the social distancing, but you're right. It's just a matter of gauging, you know, what, what that guest, you know, wants to see and, and how they're going to feel most, most comfortable. Through what we've experienced in this 90 days, what, are you, what have you learned that you're going to take into the future with you? Um, John, what, what do you want to take into the future with you? Definitely videos. Videos are everything nowadays. Um, for us, I know that I initially was scared to get on video. And then the more I've been doing it now, the more comfortable it is. And, the, and we have fun with it. Just like Paul said to the, the um, Sherlock Holmes video and stuff I did. My first social media video for our community was um, I did a cartwheel on in the model home tour and stuff just to have fun and get people's attention. And I think, um, especially in this time right now, any lightheartedness you can give people and positivity just goes even further. So for us, I definitely plan on keeping videos in doing, you know, Facebook tours and stuff of the communities um, and just keep on hitting social media. I think it's, it's important for us as new home salespeople. I know we haven't focused on it in the past to brand ourselves, but I think that moving forward, it is, it is going to be kind of the new normal. If people want to know who they're working with and people want to work with people they like. And so if they can see John and they can see your smiling face and hear your voice and you have a very soothing voice and, and that makes people <laughs> feel like, you know what, I, I want to, this is a big decision. Buying a home is a big decision. I want to go work with John. I want to see what he has to offer. So I, you know, and I, I worked at Remax as well, and I've been in real estate for a long time, and I, I've done commercial, I've done resale, new homes, I've done it all. And um, we, and, and resale, it is all about marketing ourselves because people want to know who they're going to be working with. 
So um, that's that's great that you're going to continue your social media going forward. How about you, Paul? Yeah, social media, big the Mataports on that. Uh, Kaylee and team management here has kind of taught us a new thing. I think I'll always take is is we're all a team, but with the sales agents and the COVID, it was like we're be kind of the last line of defense, and so we use that acronym in listening much more, um, apologize, empathize with the customer, and really, you know, let them know we feel what they're feeling and listen to their concerns and try to solve them. And through all this and listening to them is just always thank them. I, I think how many times we don't say thank you for coming in and you know, thank you for taking the time to come in and see us. I, we will take that with us because I have definitely seen an increase in how buyers react and respond to you when you actually listen a little more, so. Yeah, you know, we, God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, to what you're saying about saying thank you, you know, it's, it's interesting whenever I, I say, you know, it's my pleasure, you know, to one of our clients and they kind of light up just with that little, little comment that I made, um, as opposed to, oh, you're welcome. It's like, no, it's really our pleasure to help you, to serve you. And, you know, when I say to serve you, it's not, I mean, be a, be a servant, but just be of service, you know, and when we're of service to our clients, especially during this time, where there's a heightened stress, they notice the difference, you know, and they and they do want to work with someone that understands maybe the stress that they are going through. And we're all, we're all in it together. Parker, how about you? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the, just to piggyback off of everybody, how important, you know, just being that ambassador of your community and people recognize you. I mean, a lot of us have been in communities and you know, the next year we're right down the street and people remember you. So it's so great to be able to have the technology that we do to, to send videos. I know here at Altus, um, we were constantly, you know, our move and ready homes making videos and we had amazing success with showcasing those through video. And um, we virtually went from having about 10 move and ready homes to now we have two. And so we really just wow. showcased you know, our product, but also just put a familiar face to it. Um, and another thing that I, I think is very important that I'll take, uh, you know, with us, you know, into the future here, um, is how important it is to be transparent and not rely so much on us to deliver information. And, um, you know, at Altus, we have an amazing website with all sorts of information that um, people have access to. And we really ramped it up you know, when the, the um, pandemic hit and really allowed people to have all the information that they could possibly have online. And it really gave them the ability to, to educate themselves and be prepared when they came into our office. And um, so I think, you know, moving forward, making sure that our website is, is you know, just as, you know, interactive as, as being in the office is super important. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. John, I'm curious, what, what did you use for your videos? Did, was it just an iPhone, iMovie? What, what did you use? Um, the first ones, it was just an iPhone. Um, I think iPhone 10 or whatever. And with all the technology nowadays, an iPhone's better than some of these DSLR cameras, you know? So an iPhone for us. Um, and then I think just iMovie, just keeping it simple. And I mean, people know too, when they're getting a video from us, it's, it's not going to be professionally produced and stuff. It's, you know, it's a fun video and, and that's kind of what, what we want it to be. Um, yeah, no, just, just an iPhone and then basic editing software. Keep it simple. I'm all about simplicity. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, we actually had two people in over the weekend from our YouTube. And I was looking at the analytics and I thought, oh my God, 1,300 people have already viewed it, you know, in a short period of time. And, uh, and two people came in through the door. So that was, you know, it, it works. I mean, we, we, we definitely want to be teaming up with marketing and doing our, our part like we're doing. And so that's, that's really exciting. Parker, are you, are you using anything different than, than your iPhone or for your videos or what are you doing for your social media? Yeah. I mean, we just, you know, I think we all are becoming very authentic. People are, you know, you know, we don't need that professional videos to um, really showcase ourselves, but we're using, iPhone, iMovie, we uh, something called Vidyard to be able to send 
links super easy with our, you know, our branding on there. Um, you know, but just as John said, I think if it's just simple and just the fact that you get it to your buyers is the most important, important part. Um, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. And I think they actually probably like, you know, our authentic selves rather than, um, you know, something a little bit more canned. Yeah, Paul? Yeah, I think um, the videos, iMovie, um, the Lancy, we, uh, we had a lot do TikTok on that um, to keep that side of it up. And then basically iPhones, my partner and I used iPhones, but we also found at the end of them, our confetti cannons were a big hit. A little messy to clean up, but it, they were fun. So it made it fun. I heard you had a, a camera crew of five following you around. <laughs> to get those six sales. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, what, what would you guys like to tell our audience? Um, you know, because we, we've got, actually we've got quite a few people that are, are out of the area and we're watching. So um, I'm really excited about that. What can you tell some of the new home sales agents out there that are still maybe a little bit, um, Oh, apprehensive or, or nervous or scared. Um, Paul? Go I, yeah, I, I think one of it, especially through the COVID, it was really um, getting up in the morning, getting yourself in a positive space, new dawn, new day, and really never give up, never surrender. It's <laughs> like once you, you have that mindset, you're going to make it through, you'll be successful. And mm -hmm. Lance, I, I literally have the chills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Lansky and team, Kaylee, um, they've been the big cheerleaders behind a lot of things to keep the team motivated. So, um, and it feels like a family here. So hats off to them. It, it is. You, you have an amazing company. Amazing company. Uh, Parker. Yes. Well, you know, I, I'm a child of, I like to say a child of the recession you know, and how that affected me. And so I've been waiting for this moment for something big to happen. And, <laughs> and what I do in this moment, you know, when it did happen. And I think that, you know, looking back, the one thing that I would just say is to just be in a constant state of learning because, you know, no matter what happens or, you know, what did happen, if you took that time and you just learned something new or learned a new way of selling or adapt to a different environment, um, you're just going to be just light years ahead. And I, and so I've been kind of waiting for this moment uh, for a long time. And I think, um, you know, I've learned just in these three months of, of how flexible I can become and how quickly I can adapt. And, um, you know, just to be in that constant state of, of willing to learn something new and be challenged and don't, don't see it as a, as a uh, problem and just be optimistic about, um, you know, how you're going to come out of it. And, and you do love to learn. I know that about you and you're very yeah. involved with our sales and marketing council and thank goodness we have an award winning council that does want to always contribute to us with the different mm -hmm. opportunities to learn. Hey, by the way, if you guys aren't a member and you are in our area, please join to become a member. Uh, if you're not in our area, reach out to your own sales and marketing council in your areas and, and get involved because as a family, we, we learn together. The more we share, the more we sell. The more we share, the more we learn is what we're doing here right now together. Um, John, how about you? I think two things. One, um, you know, we all have to invest in ourselves. Kind of like what Parker was saying, you know, I actually took a Tom Ferry marketing edge class, a virtual kind of seminar thing, and I got so much insight out of that. And so I think that's one thing really big on investing in ourselves and also to just, just start it, get started. You know, I think um, like you commented on earlier and stuff, we don't have all this professional equipment, you know, we don't have scripts and stuff. We're just doing it. And um, I think so often with most things in life too, we're so afraid, Oh, I got to get this, this, this first and stuff. No, just get started and just do it. Um, for example, for me too, I, I don't like to post too much real estate stuff on social. I know my friends want to see more of so my personal life, not my work stuff, but for me, I actually posted our model homes for the first time on, on my social. And I have an old teammate from college who wants to buy a house at my next community already. That's not even starting until next year. So it's just, you never know. Um, and it, it surprised me, but I say just get started. 
Oh, that's that's fantastic, fantastic. What I want to really share with you know our listeners is um, take time for you as well and self care. Um, I know I've gained ten pounds, so so you know to get out there, get sunshine. Um, I'm back with my trainer again. Thank goodness the gym is open. Um, eat well again, you guys. Uh, eat your organic foods, your non-GMOs, and, and just the better you feel, the the better you're gonna you're gonna be at work. So um, that's what that's what I would love to have everyone take away from. Hi, Jasmine. Hi. I thought I popped back in. Surprise. Great. <laughs> um, I know. Um, I I would love if the audience has any questions. I haven't really seen anything pop through. Mike wanted to point out that he's loved seeing all the videos. What I think as GSMC, what we can do is uh, share links to Paul, all of your videos, so our audience can see what we've been talking about. Um, so you can see that it's, yes, it's challenging, as John said, the first time you do it, but then, you know, it's, the more often you do it, the better it is. And I love that when someone comes in the office or off in your sales office, they reckon you, you know, they're like, Oh my God, I saw you like it's on TV or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I think, you know, you become your own little superstar. I have a hard time getting our board to do this presentation because it is difficult. So uh, starting with July, everyone on our GSMC board is going to take a turn hosting this so you, we all get used to it too. I want to tie this back real quick um, and we won't go too long unless I see some questions. Parker, you said something about um, how you, you know, didn't have to wait a long time to, you know, normally you would have to wait for things to be run up the chain to get approved and mm -hmm. things just happened like literally overnight. And mm -hmm. I want to say on our marketing uh, webinar about a month ago, Megan um, Eltringham and Daniel told us the same thing. And they're in marketing. So sales and marketing are saying the same thing that, hey, um, you know, normally we would not be able to react this quickly. It would at least take, what, a week, two weeks? We're not sure. But maybe this is a message to our higher ups to say, hey, look, maybe we need to be doing this more frequently, embracing this new technology or whatever it is. It's not all tech. Like you said, the confetti popper thing, <laughs> Paul, whatever that happens to be. Um, so I, I feel like there's a, a real connection between what marketing said and what sales said. And, and it's almost like get out of our way and let us get sales. I'm probably going to get yelled at by somebody, but <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you, what do you have? Here's a question from uh, no name. What do you have to say to those who don't believe in using social media for marketing real estate? Um, John, I think you spoke to that because why don't you go ahead and address that? Um, yeah, I think like we've all kind of discussed too, I think it's really important to put a face to the neighborhood. I know so often in new homes, especially you're used to consumers at least are used to seeing just the model home pictures, the, you know, the lifestyle video, the, the Matterport and stuff like that, as opposed to um, kind of like what Maddie touched on earlier. If we, have that that face to face or at least I see our face through a screen interaction beforehand um, I've found that it already creates a rapport with the buyer when they walk through the door um, I know about a week ago we had some people who came in they said hey you're the guys from social media and stuff so that was super cool for us to to see the the fruit of our labor so to say um, but you know to each their own I'll, I'll personally admit to I actually was super against social media like two years I, two years ago I, I turned off social for a whole year just because I thought the interpersonal, it was, it was losing the interpersonal relationships with people. But um, honestly, now that I started to back up and stuff again to, hey, I'm here to sell homes and I have new buyers because of it. So I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> really good. You know, I want to um, add okay. to that. Yeah. So for anyone that's a little bit apprehensive or, or uncomfortable with this, team up with your local realtors, collaborate with them. They also want to be able to produce videos for their, their own personal sites. So if you go on my LinkedIn, you're going to see several uh, videos that I posted with different realtors. So maybe that's something. Absolutely. Oh, we got another question from Melody. Um, what is the number one advice you would give to newer, green, and not as seasoned salespeople out there on how to navigate and over overcome these challenging times? And um, I feel like, Parker, you need to take this question because you're the closest to having just <laughs> one rookie sales professional of the year. Uh, what yeah. would you recommend to someone just starting 
Yeah, I think, you know, this business for whether you're just beginning or, or you know, have been in it a few years or, or many years, it's challenging. And I think it's emotional. And there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of work that you need to do on, you know, your yourself and, and really just, just learning to open yourself up to, to you know, kind of like I mentioned earlier, learn. And um, I just feel I've been in new homes for about four years now. And um, I feel like I, I, I'm brand new every day that I walk into the office. And you just have to take that and know that that's just a feeling that, um, you know, you're going to have and you just need to kind of power through each day and, and just accept those challenges. And, and, um, you know, some people have been in many, many different markets, ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs. And this is really my first, you know, experience with, with, a um, something, you know, happening in the market. And so you just have to kind of sit back and enjoy the ride and, you know, if this is really a career that you love and, and are passionate about, um, you know, you just have to know to, to put people first, put your clients first and, and, you know, help them achieve their goals. Very well said. Thank you. You know, um, I, I just saw, uh, I was looking at the question and answer, yeah. and that was actually Melody Simmet, and she won Rookie of the Year as well. Yeah, and here rookie. she is on this webinar also still asking questions, wanting to learn. And so I just want, yeah, I just want the listeners to, to see that um, we, we're never going to stop learning, you know, and that's how we just keep growing. Uh, real quick, uh, the other thing would be to reach out to the Greater Sales and Marketing Council <laughs> because we will support you. We will introduce you to people. Uh, we will have you meet mentors like Maddie and other sales professionals in the industry to kind of show you the ropes if that's what you need. You don't have to go, go do this alone by any means. This industry is all about supporting the people that we have supporting us. Uh, from Michael Renzi, what's been the effect on other forms of marketing media with the increase in social media? Um, I guess I should take that and then mm -hmm. I'll let you all talk. Um, I, I think personally or as, a, as an agency or as agency people, you know, obviously we've seen a change in patterns, but we were already doing a lot of social media. Um, our friends at Get Community, our friends, um, you know, at our other shops are, were already embracing it. So uh, I think this just really pumped it up for them. And uh, what I like is that you individuals are embracing your brands and not necessarily, you know, waiting to, to, for, for me to do something for you. Sure, that takes a little bit out of my pocket, but that's okay. <laughs> as long as we're having fun and selling homes. Um, let's see, we're at 520. Good questions. And then shout out again to Melody Samet. What year did she uh, win? Melody, let me know and I'll give you a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. All right. Sorry? I believe it was 20, I'm sorry, 2019. 2019, well, congratulations. And uh, I think Parker, you're right. Um, just, I love that statement. Every day I come in and it's a new day. I mean, yeah. that's a great way <laughs> and, to, to treat it. And just to, to um, uh, just an interesting thing, you know, this, you know, what you guys do here is, is just super amazing. Cause when I first got in, just having a builder that is a part of groups like this, um, and really, you know, tries to showcase, um, you know, the talent that they do have and just having these different connections and being able to feed off each other is something that is so important. And so I, I think every builder really should be, you know, in groups like this, um, you know, because ultimately we're all learning from each other and, and um, it's done, you know, wonders for, for me and, and my career. So thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, well, I should give a shout out to uh, all of our builders who enter their stellar salespeople in the Greater Sales and Marketing Sales Awards, um, yes. which we uh, do quarterly, and then those get rolled up to the national level, which is where Maddie has uh, come home with that trophy twice. So um, I guess can't say more than I mean, we're beating a dead horse here. Sorry, but yeah, get involved. Uh, anything else anyone wants to add uh, that I missed or that Maddie and I might have missed that you gentlemen um, 
want to touch on? There's, uh, there's a question about um, incentives that I see. Sorry? I see a question about incentives. Um, how? Oh, I didn't see so, that. Oh, it's our. Oh, it's there our it is. Very, <laughs> it's our very, yeah, there it is. <laughs> hey, you know, Greg Lee, our, our Toll Brothers Area Sales Manager. For how do you yeah. handle people who are asking for discounts during these times? <laughs> um, Paul, I, I'd love to hear how you're handling it. Yeah, I know. Kaylee will probably um, <laughs> poke, poke the bear on that one. But um, yeah, we always, sales agents, we always love incentives on the management <laughs> side, not so much. But I found the social media really helps out. Uh, it's getting that point across to them that they come in and they think the market's tanking and you know the sky's falling as far as that goes. Uh, I found a uh, Leslie Sargent in the OC register. I try to post that on LinkedIn. She has a great positive little one minute read on it. It's I've started getting a lot of hits on that. I'm able to take that and turn that to clients email and my thank yous to them to show them you know, the sky's not falling. Prices are actually stable. We've raised our build out pricing on it you know you're going to miss out it's still a great time it's just getting that feedback to them to let them know it's not what they think and, and you know the rule 200 they'll go out if we can get through to that one person they're going to say to another buyer you know i talked to that sales agent but it's you know it's not what we think it's like things are going up they're raising prices things are stable and i think it really helps garner uh sales down the road and our, 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 our interest rates are, I mean, it's free money right now. These, these are Never the lowest better. rates, you know, and, and for that reason, the buyers that are out there are like, okay, help me find a home. I've got to, I've got to get one now. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so when, when you, at least for me, when I share with them how much their payment is at 3% as opposed to 5 6%, then all of a sudden, the, the thought of an incentive is not so important anymore. It's just a matter of, okay, let's get you onto an agreement of sale and let's get you close so you can take advantage of the interest rate. Any other questions? Let's see. There's one in here. Uh, Gretchen, are you finding that prospective buyers are more comfortable with taking photos and videos than before? Maybe because they can't bring their friends and family out to your homes to tour with them, and then they can sh share those. Mm -hmm. um, Parker. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, I think it's it's a, and and that's the beauty of it is when you have when you make it easy for these customers to you know, to have the home that they're looking at, you know, at their fingertips and, and just give them all that information. Oh, my lights went out in the office. <laughs> um, you know, you really have um, this unique opportunity to be able to share, you know, um, with family and, and friends. I think, um, yeah, if, if you have any sort of analytics on any of the software you use, you can see that, you know, you may send it to 10 people, but there may be a hundred people that have viewed it. So, um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of good things that happen when you're able to share. Jasmine, I see a I see a question from uh, Renee. Uh, Renee, like to Renee, who's on the board, is uh, talking about interior design, which I love. <laughs> Renee, oh, you're funny. Uh, she would like to know. So if we're going, uh, don't you think, she's being silly. I'm not going to read this, Renee. Don't you think beautifully furnished models still help them fall in love with the home? Yes, of course, Renee. <laughs> you, know, you know, she, she has a good point, though. Because, she does you know, have a good with point. With all this AI and thinking that maybe salespeople aren't needed, the other thing that I've really realized is in a situation that we're experiencing right now, People need people still, and, and they need that interaction, and they need that support, and they need the beautiful models, and they want us to walk them through and turn them through. This is not buying a car, you know, and I hope builders aren't going to think that it's going to be that way. We do need the gorgeous models. We do need the representation. We need to hold, hold their hand through the process. Stress is stress still, and spending money is stressful. And so, yes, continue giving us gorgeous models and continue having us uh, be the best representation we can be for you. Thanks, Renee, with Chameleon Design. 
<laughs> <Shout out. laughs> but yeah, I'm, again, we're, we're running a little low on time. Um, I, I think you're absolutely right, Maddie. I know that was um, something that came up in, in several of our meetings. Uh, even our last marketing one was, are we going to need salespeople? Heck yes, because we can, and marketing can only do so much. You all build those relationships. Um, we're, we're behind the scenes. So relationships do everything as we know in this industry, but also with your consumer. And I think Maddie and all of you are stellar examples of that. So um, I think that's about it. This was amazing. Thank you again, Maddie, first of all, for taking time out of your very busy schedule to do this. And uh, Paul, John, and Parker yeah. for joining us. And again, um, thank you, BIASC and the Greater Sales and Marketing Council. Get involved, get, get involved. recognized, <laughs> get educated. Um, there's, there's just a lot to take advantage of. So again, Maddie, anything to add? I, um, I thank you again. Just know that thank you so much for um, for our panelists for being our frontline heroes. Uh, you guys are exceptional. It's it's been truly an honor to have this uh, webinar with you, Jasmina. Thank you for all, all that you do in our industry and being one of the first people I met when I joined the Sales and Marketing Council. We, we never know how far reaching what we do and say will affect the lives of millions uh, in the future. So, Jasmina, you're you're one of those people, and I honor you for that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Hey, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks.